Okay. We are reading from the Gospel of St. John. John chapter 12. Gospel of John chapter 12, verse 23 to 26. John 12, 23 to 26. And it reads, but Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lord and our God, Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We honor you for your word. We honor you because your word is true. And we are privileged to sit at your feet right now to, to listen to what you are going to speak to us about. And Holy Spirit, we pray because you will reveal all truth to us. We pray that you would reveal the truth of this word to us. So that we don't just hear it in one ear and it goes out of the other. But we would actually understand it and take it to heart and practice it for our good. Because what God plans for us is not the few years in this world. His plans for us are eternal. So Lord help us to walk the work that you need us, that you have prepared for us to walk. Open our, the, the ears of our heart. Touch our hearts, Lord, and help us. Give us an understanding heart that we may receive everything that you are going to speak to us about today and live by it to the glory of your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm still a bit shaken from the prayer we just did, but um, as I'm praying, first I thought I was seeing, you know, how you, you have a cross, and you can see some drawing, like when, like, uh, 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 um, like a, a sheet. You know, like Jesus was covered in a sheet, like that cloth was, you know, thrown across that cross. But then it, it changed into something like a balance. So you have, you know, a balance like in a court of law or whatever. You know, the weight that swings, so that's what it's turning into. So it, it speaks of judgment, it, we are talking about the cross and the judgment and so we just, we, I just pray that, that's why I'm, I'm kind of stuttering now, trying to, to understand what it's all about. But let us, let us just um, open our hearts, not just listen with our physical ears, but Listen with the ears of our heart and let the Holy Spirit speak to us individually through these words. And um, I'm going to touch a lot of passages. So I, I pray that those words will, will help us to understand. So. As I'm giving you the Bible passages, write them down so you can read them later. Your mind will forget. 
if we were able to remember everything, God would not have told the children of Israel to write things down. And that's how the Bible came to be, because he told them, write this down, write this down. Everything I tell you, write down. Because your mind hasn't got the capacity to remember everything. So as I'm giving you the Bible passages, just write them down so you can refer again to them later. So the title of uh, the message of today is Die That You Might Live. Die. You must die to self so that you might live. If, you, if, if we read the, if, uh, if you, when you plant a grain of wheat, you put it in the ground, it dies first before it germinates. And once it germinates, it brings forth much fruit. So the dying to self is the unlocking of your destiny. The dying to self unlocks your destiny. If you don't die, the real you doesn't open up. If you don't die to self, to the wants of this world, the, the real you will not unlock. You'll just be chasing after the things of this world and you lose the real uh, wealth, the real inheritance, what you are really supposed to inherit as a child of God. Whether we believe in God or not, we know that we did not come from the trees. We did not come from butterflies. Somebody put all these things there. So we belong to that somebody. And that somebody is God and he is spirit. And because he is spirit, we have to understand that we are first and foremost spirit. And because we are spirit, that's why we need this flesh to, to live in, to operate in. That's why Jesus had to die so that he can reproduce many more of his kind. That's why we as Christians are little Jesuses all around the world. Jesus had to die so he could reproduce more of his kind. We read there, John 12, 24. Jesus says, most assuredly, or verily, verily, like we know in King James, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, he was predicting his death, but people did not get it. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So he knew that he had to die in order to bring many sons to God. And if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we too must know that we have to die in order to produce more than ourselves. That's why we are blessed to be blessers. We are saved to be savers. We are, we, any, you know, when God has revealed himself to you, that means go and be that part of me. I have saved you so you can stand with me and save others. I have blessed you so you can stand with me and bless others. And if you look further in that John 12, verse 32, it says, And I, if I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. So he was predicting his death, that he had to go, go into the ground and die and bring much from. When he comes out, when he's lifted up, he will draw many to himself. And that's why you and I are here. We have been drawn by the death and resurrection of Jesus. So today we are living in that resurrection power. 
And that is the power that unlocks closed doors. The unlocking of destinies comes from dying to self. So we have to make up our minds to die so that we might actually be able to live. Amen? So whoever loves his life will lose it. That's what verse 25 of John 12 says. Whoever loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world, that's the life that the world offers you. When you hate that life, then you will keep your real life for eternal, for eternity. And if we, if we check out a similar passage in Matthew, a similar passage in Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. Like I said, just write Matthew 10, 36 to 39. Matthew 10, 36 to 39. Matthew 1036 to 39. And he said to them, that's Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? 36. They said to him, grant us that we might sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Mm, wait a minute. I think I missed that. There might be a mark. Okay, let's just wait. Um, 38, you, are, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And he went on to say, you will indeed drink the cup and, that I drink. And with the baptism I'm baptized with, you will be baptized. So what he's saying that we, we have to, to, to do or go through the same path that he, our master, our savior, had to go through. We are, if we are his children, then we have to walk according, sorry, I, I think I read a different, sorry guys, I, I miss, it's not Matthew I read there, even though it, it sounded like it, but it's not it, my mistake, sorry. Matthew 10. I went to Mark, not Matthew. Matthew 10, 36. It says, And a man's enemy will be those of his own household. Or maybe I should read from 35 so that we get it a bit more. It says, For I have come to set a man against his, fam uh, against his father, a daughter against he her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So Matthew 10, I'm actually reading Matthew 10 from 35 now, 36. And a man's enemy will be those of his own household. Verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake will find it. So that's, that's closer to the John 12 that we read. Technically, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm being told about the Duva. Only three of them, there's 11 sets. So three out of 11, they Okay. So what we are saying is a man's, Matthew, Matthew the verse 36 says, a man's enemy will be those of his own household. That means if you expect 
people to understand you. If you expect father and mother to understand you when you follow Jesus, it might not always be like that. They will reject you. And you must also reject them if they don't understand. And rather, you should choose Jesus so that you will be restored. And by choosing Jesus, you can actually draw them to the life that they don't understand. We hear so many testimonies. Now, when somebody uh, uh, accepts Jesus, especially in pagan families or, you know, non-believing families, when, when, you know, one of the children or one, whether husband or wife, anybody in the family, when they choose Jesus, you see everybody turns against them. They'll be like, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And it is written there, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Jesus says, I came to set a man against his father. That means if you follow me, you will be misunderstood. If you truly, truly, because who understood him? The people of his time did not understand him. The Pharisees were studying about him, but when they saw him, they didn't recognize him. They just saw him as a carpenter's boy. And that's what we read in, in, in Luke 5, uh, uh, was it 26 now? I have to get that right now. Um, yes. That was correct. Luke 5, 26. He says, we have seen strange things today. What I'm saying is that your life will be strange if you truly follow Jesus. You cannot live the kind of life that the world is living. If you are dead to this world, you cannot expect people to, to see you as, as they are. Because you are no longer like them. You can't expect them to understand you. You must expect rejection. You must expect tribulation. A man's enemy will be that of his household, Jesus said. People from your own, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Because you have been called out. Like God called Abraham out of Babylon. You have been called out to live a different kind of life. To live a righteous kind of life. To live a life that everyone doesn't understand. That's why when you do things and, and, or when your friends do things. And uh, they say you do it and you say I don't. They will be like. Oh, but everyone does it. Tell them I'm not everyone. Because I have been called out of the group that calls themselves everyone. I'm not everyone. I have been called out. And that is what the Greek ecclesia means for the church. The called out ones. That is the church. That is the bride of Christ. That is the real Christian, you are called out, ecclesia. That's what the church means in, in Greek. So you have to understand it. Jesus says, take your cross and follow me. Was it a, a pretty sight that day that Jesus was carrying the cross? No, it wasn't. Only those who loved him truly were by his side. And those, yeah, who, who just thought, you know what, this man, I know people are saying crucify him, but I know this guy healed my brother. This guy healed my mother. This guy, you know, healed somebody in my neighborhood. I can only remember that he did good things. So you search within your heart, what do I know about Jesus? Do I just want to treat him like the rest of the world does? 
Or is there something in particular that I know about Jesus that will not let me go away from his side? No matter what my father says, no matter what my mother says, no matter what my friend says, no matter what my sibling, there is something I know about Jesus that does not just allow me to walk away. I know it feels painful. I'm carrying this cross. But I know that there's something that is compelling me. This is the God that does strange things. So I cannot expect people to look at those strange situations and, and understand because it has not been given to them. It has not been given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I am here because I know something. This God is a mysterious God. This God is a God that can do strange things according to Luke 5, 26. This God does strange things. And because I know one of the strange things he has done in my life, I cannot just let go. I cannot just, just say things about him just because others are saying it. I cannot just walk away because others are walking away. I cannot just allow my, my feelings, my emotions to tell me, oh, this cross is too much. Like, even though I mistakenly read uh, Mark 10 instead of Matthew 10, you know, Jesus says in that Mark 10, 36. What do you want me to do for you? And they say, grant that we may sit one on your right hand. See, people want the easy way out. This is, this is talk, okay, if you read from verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Yeah, because they were close to him and they knew he, you know, he was that God that could just do things. Do for us whatever we ask. Because he said, just go in my name and do it. It will be done. So, yeah. So Jesus said, what, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in glory. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. This thing is not, it's not a walk in the park. It's not a stroll in the park. Yes, there is glory. You know there is glory. But Jesus says, are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? There is a price to pay. Yes, there is glory. But it's not just, you know, a wish. Grant that we sit with you. Yes, you will sit, but you have to walk the walk. Are, are you able? But because Jesus knew, so then, then the, they said to him, we are able. Yes, they agreed. So Jesus said to them, you will indeed, because Jesus knew them. They knew, he knew they will go through it. He knew their heart that they were, in this situation, they were not just saying it. Jesus knew they would go through it. So Jesus says, indeed, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink. And with the baptism I'm baptized with, you will be baptized. He says, however, to sit on my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. So, Jesus is trying to say, yes, there's glory. Yes, you, you, you reign with me. But on my right and on my left, that's the Father's business. What, and, and that is what I said about being called out. 
You, we are called out for a purpose. We are called out to die to self because we know that there is glory ahead of us. Amen? That's what Peter says. This, this, this thing we are doing is not just... Uh, um, we, are, we are not just following somebody for following sake. And, and there's no reward. Of course there's a reward. Of course there's a reward. Peter... First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. So 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the presence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called out of darkness. Verse 10 says, Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You see, it is God's mercy that he called us out. And that is why we must walk the same walk. He died to gain more sons and daughters for, for his father. And we too, we have to walk that walk. We have to, to be baptized in that same baptism. Because we know that there's glory ahead. Because we know that we have been chosen. A royal priesthood. A special nation. People special unto God. He did not just, you know, ask us to, to carry the cross and, and just to suffer. No, it's not about suffering. It's about the glory. But you must understand why am I carrying this cross? You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. You have a special stamp on you. That you may proclaim the presence of him who called you out of darkness. Don't forget, you know, we are, we are not all Jews. We are Gentiles. We, we were born into darkness. But the mercy of God called, out of, called us out of that darkness so that we can tell the world, Come, see, see where I am now. This can't be normal. So we have a duty to live for him who died our death. We have that duty. And that is why I'm going to repeat for those who heard it on Wednesday and Friday again. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to repeat, but for those who did not hear, it will help. So we are going back to that Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 33, or 32, sorry. Deuteronomy 32. Okay, 32, verse 44. Going down. So this was what Moses declared, Deuteronomy 32 from 44 to 47, I will read. So Moses came with Joshua. Remember what we said about Joshua last time, that he was always in the presence of God. And that's why he was called out, a young man. He was called out away from all the elders that should have supported Moses because this young man sought the presence of God. You see, he's here. His name is mentioned right here next to Moses. So Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and spoke to all, uh, sorry, and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel, Everyone in Israel, old, young, short, tall, every 
person in Israel that came out of Egypt. He spoke these words to them. And he said to them, set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe all the words of this law. For it is not a futile thing. That means it's not idle words. Because it is your life. And by this word, you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. So what we are saying here is, you have been called out. Look at these people of Israel. They were, they were called out of Egypt. They were, they were called out of slavery. And they were going into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But they had to be warned. Yes, there is glory where you are going. But do not just relax. Take these words to heart. They are not idle words. Do not trifle it. It's not a trifling matter. It is your very life. And if you abide by them, it will bring you good success. We need to understand that, yes, there's glory ahead. Yes, you are going to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But don't just, you know, play with your life. Don't play with your life. These words that we are hearing, Jesus says, Again, in, in John 6, 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So this word that you are hearing gives you life. It opens your mind. It, 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 it opens, it unlocks your destiny. Don't, don't just play around with it. Be serious about what you are hearing and, and live by it. It is the spirit who gives life, John 6, 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. So let that flesh die. The gain you gain in this world will all turn into rumbled and dust one day. We, we, we heard it, was it two weeks ago? The disciples were admiring the beautiful temple in, in Jerusalem. Jesus said, yes, that's beautiful, but don't worry. This is, is all dust. It's rubble. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh Prophets, nothing. That's the word of God. And Jesus spoke it. It is in red in my Bible. John 6, 63. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Yeah, he does not expect everybody to believe it. So if you believe it, live by it. Take it seriously. It's your life. John 6, 63. And 64, 64 that says, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus does not force anybody to believe. He tells you this is your life. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. If you abide, if you take these words to heart and live by them, you will, you will succeed. You will have the real life because the flesh profits nothing. Die that you might live. When you truly do the will of, your, of God your Father, then he will be an enemy to your enemies. You don't have to fight your battles. Just obey him. Let me show you that in the book. I said I'll give you many, many passages. Just write them down to help you when you don't think. Exodus 23. 
Exodus 2, 3, from verse 20 to 23. Exodus 23, 20 to 23. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Talking about that glory that you are looking to, uh, uh, forward to, like the sons of Zebedee. James and John, they say they knew there was glory in the presence of Jesus. Psalm, Psalm 16 says that in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore, forevermore. That is the pleasure that you want. In your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forever. That's where they wanted to sit. They knew, they knew these two boys, they knew. That beside Jesus, there's pleasure. And God is saying here in Exodus 20, or Exodus 23 from verse 20, Behold, I send an angel before you. So, so this journey that you are on, you are not alone. So when you are carrying that cross and it, and it feels uncomfortable, remember, even Jesus, people helped him with the carrying of the cross. So you are not carrying it alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. He will send help when you need help. I'm sending an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have. I have. God has already prepared. You just have to walk into it. Believe it and keep going. Believe it and keep going. Believe it and keep going. Look at the glory. Look at the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Not at the problems around you that Satan is trying to throw around you so to, to remove your focus from your destiny. You die to self to unlock your destiny. God has prepared your destiny for you. You, you are his inheritance. So God is warning you about this angel in this case. Say, beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Verse 22, Exodus 23, 22 now. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. For my angel will go before you and bring you into and bring you in to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. I will cut them off because you obey me. So when you do the will of God, when you obey, if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversary. So you walk, you are Jesus' walk, and let God fight your battles. That's what it amounts to. You die to self and let God do what he can do, what he has promised. He promised this to you before you even knew it. So don't let your mind start to, to wander. God says, go to the place I have already prepared. Write it down again, Deuteronomy 33, verse 8 to 11. Deuteronomy, D-E-U-T, is short, you can shorten it, D-E-U-T. Chapter 33, verse 8 to 11. Now listen to God's promise for those who diligently obey him. This is the blessing that Moses pronounced on God's behalf on the Levites. The Levites, according to 1 Peter 2, 
verse 9 that we read. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, yeah? A holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the presence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is those he has called out to serve him. So when you obey, listen to what the, the blessing that the Levites received. And to Levi he said, let your Tumim and your Urim be with your Holy One. So Lord is giving you divine insight through revelation. Whom you tested at Massa, see you will be tested, and with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah. Who says of his father and mother, I have not seen them. So that's what I said at the beginning and what Jesus said that a man's enemies will be that, those of his own household. So this is the called out ones, the Levites. Who say to his father and his mother, I have not seen them. Nor did he acknowledge his brothers. You are alone on this journey. You are only with Christ. Nor did he acknowledge his brother. That, that doesn't mean, you know, you shouldn't acknowledge your brother. It just says spiritually you have been called out. And only those who walk this walk will understand. Don't expect people in the flesh to understand because you have died to the flesh. You cannot be on the same level with them any longer. So he says of his father and mother, I have not seen them, nor did he acknowledge his brothers or know his own children. For they have observed your word, that's the Levites, and kept your covenant. They shall teach. That's what Peter said there. Because that you may proclaim the presence of him who called you out. So verse 10 of Deuteronomy 30, 33. Says, they shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law. They shall put incense before you and a whole burnt sacrifice on your altar. And he says, verse 11, bless his substance because he has obeyed you. He is doing your will, he is doing your job. Bless his substance, Lord, and accept. The work of his hands. Listen to this. Strike the loins of those who rise against him. And of those who hate him. That they rise not again. That's exactly what Exodus 23 says. That God will be an enemy to your enemy. Because you are Walking in obedience to his word. You have taken to heart the words that you have been given by the Holy Spirit. God will bless your substance. He will accept the work of your hands. And he will strike the loins of those who rise against you. And of those who hate you that they rise not again. God will fight your battle. But you must die to self. You, you, you must not answer everything that anybody says to you. Just bless them and carry on. Like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. As a Levite, as a called out one, as the priest of the Most High God, you are blessed. You are blessed because God has already done it before you knew it. But the word is die. The flesh profits nothing. Die that you might live. You cannot live a fulfilled life. You cannot fulfill, unlock your destiny if you are holding on to you are alive. No. You'll be stunted. You cannot grow. You, you, you die so that you can grow. Jesus died so he, he could draw many to himself. 
It is your eternal life that matters, not the millions that we are making in this world. That those millions blind us because we think, oh, see how successful I am. No, you are not successful. You are stunted. If you do not plan that million for eternity, having the millions is not the problem. But planning that million for eternity and drawing others into the fruitfulness of that million, that is what matters. Money in itself is good. Look around. The Jewish people are the richest. Because God blessed them ahead of time. Money is good when you, when you plan it with, with God. Money is not evil, but the love of money is the root of evil. When you love that money more than your God, more than the one who provides you with the energy, with the intelligence, with the ability to make those millions, that's when it, it breeds evil. That's what First Timothy 6 verse 10 says. 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Money in itself is God-given. God, God created gold. God created the world and it was perfect and everything that is in it. But we, as Levites, as God's chosen people, a royal priesthood, who have been set apart, away from father, away from mother, away from brother and sister, away from unfriendly friends. We have to know that in order for us to live, we must die in order for us to receive that blessing that Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 33 from verse 8 says, that the, the blessing that is proclaimed over the Levites, we must die to say, we must be separated, we must be consecrated, we must be set apart. If your father and your mother doesn't agree with you, it's not a problem. You have been called out to pray for them. If your friends don't agree with you, it's not a problem. You have been called out so that you can pray for them. They are still in the dark and you are in the light. So they, you cannot expect them to understand what you see in the light. They, they, they cannot see in the dark. So it is not a problem. You just pray for them. Pray for them. Forgive them for rejecting you. And release yourself into God's hands. Because God himself will be an enemy to your enemies. And let God do it. It's perfect when God does it. Because you don't know the intention of anybody's heart. Some people might just be taunting you because they heard another person do it. And they are just doing it out of ha ha ha. You know. Not knowing. But maybe another person that did it, did it out of the wickedness of their heart. So you don't know. Two people are doing the same thing to you, but those two people have different intentions. So the best thing, hand both of them over to God. Because God is the perfect judge. He will know how to deal with them. And you will not have any guilty conscience. Because you will not hate them. He said you will bless them. So that when, when you see bad things happen to them, you, you, you will know. Me, my, my conscience is clear. I don't pray any bad prayers against anybody. I live the life that God has told me to live. I die to self and I live. Paul says, I owe, I owe nobody anything other than love. I owe nothing. I owe nothing other than love. I owe you love. And it is love I will give you. 
I don't care what you throw at me. It is love I will give you. That is what I owe you. So you just keep loving them. Keep praying for them. And if they don't repay you with good, let God be the judge. Amen? So let us die to self. And when you die to self, that's when you can live that kind of life. Because a dead man, I don't care how, how many times you poke a dead man, he's dead. He will not react. He's dead, he's dead. You can poke him all you like. So when you die to self, these things don't matter. That's why Jesus could hang on the cross with his hands stretched, pierced, bleeding, and he could still say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Of course, they don't know what they are doing because they are living in the dark. You know what they don't know. So just forgive them, hand them over to Father. Let Father be the judge. We have been set apart to praise him, to glorify him, to reveal him to those who don't know. Like Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw many. So it's your place to draw many. So let us end there today and let our prayer be, Father, help me to die to self that I might live for you, that I might live a fulfilled life, that I might truly unlock my destiny. Because when a grain of wheat falls into the, ground, into the ground and dies, that is when it bears much fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this word. Lord, we just are speechless at the things that you do. We, 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 we read it again today in, in, in Luke chapter 5 that you do strange things. Father, help us to continue to see strange things in your, in your presence. In John 6, 64, you say many hear this, but they don't believe. But Father, we thank you that you have given us a believing heart, that we hear this and we truly believe, even though it might not look uh, um, probably correct to the human mind, but the human mind cannot understand the things of God. So Lord, we thank you that you have opened our minds into your realm to start to understand the things, the way you understand. You say, my ways are not your ways. My, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Father, we know that certain things is, can never be understood in the flesh. And that's why you ask us to die to, to, to the flesh. Because the flesh profits nothing. So Lord, as you have given us this word today, we take it to heart. And Lord, we say like that grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies, let us die. Because if it remains alone, it cannot reproduce. But when it dies, it produces much grain. Lord, help us as we believe in you. Help us to draw many to yourself. Help us to, to produce much grain. Help us to multiply our potential. Help us, Lord, to unlock our destiny. Help us, Lord, to be able to, 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 to be things that our minds cannot even understand. Talk less of our friends. Father, help us to walk this walk so that in dying to self, we can live an abundant life which you have already prepared for us. Thank you, Father. Help us not to forget this word and to live by it to the praise and glory of your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.